This is ThinkTech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are Cannabis Chronicles, a 10,000-year odyssey. So tell me, muse, of that plant of many resources, which wandered far and wide the ancient plant of food, fuel, and fiber, cultivated for the millennia. As we venture through the past 10,000 years, we will explore and discover the plant from which cannabis derives, the many uses of the plant, hemp, cannabis, hashes, cannabis and religion, cannabis and medicine, cannabis and, oh dear, Uncle Sam. So our odyssey begins. Today, our odyssey is not long ago and far away. It's current and in progress. Hemp, yes, hemp, an environmentally friendly plant. It's a nature, natural miracle cure from God for us for healing. What is seen in hemp is mind-blowing. The complexity, the intricacy of the plant is extraordinary. Over 60,000 products and derivatives have been made from hemp. It is the most versatile material on the planet. There's almost something that's in intelligently designed. What can I say? Uh, divine, I guess, is, is what it was. Hemp seems to be a divine gift from the Almighty. The hemp plant is literally manufacturing medicine for free. Every living plant has an intention, a purpose for existing. A plant consciousness is real, and hemp wants to be medicine. So, here we are today with a new friend, a new best friend. Thank you very <laughs> Ta much. Uh, Tom J. Piper. That's right? correct. Now, Tom is the owner of Fishing Moon Botanicals. And it, he's an expert in cannabis and in hemp, having traveled and lived all around the world, getting to know multiple plants and how they are used in different cultures. Tom Piper, Tom J. Piper, <laughs> started Fishing Moon Botanicals in 2017 here in Honolulu. He's a resident for 31 years and has over 40 years of experience in the cannabis industry. Tom developed tinctures and ornaments for the medicine cannabis industry in California. Having survived cancer, multiple accidents, and more, Tom is using Fishing Moon products daily. So, welcome, Tom. Thank you very welcome. much. Thanks for having and he's me. And he's got products. He's going to tell us all about hemp. Now, let's talk about you first. You're from Germany originally? Born and raised in Germany um, in 1957. Um, spent my first 15 years uh, in Germany, became a merchant marine, and left for the world early on. So you've been all over the world as a merchant marine? Um, not quite. Um, I had a, a couple of three years stint in the merchant marines, but my, 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 my quest for world travel, see the world and experience, um, was really much fueled by, my, by three photo albums that my dad had in his, in his possession as a, as a cook working on ships, and, and I wanted to see the world. So I left early. Um, and have now logged um, 46 countries in my life. I changed my nationality once. I became an American. Um, I still travel frequently all over the place. And I have experienced hemp, cannabis, in several different countries and have experienced and seen how it's been used in different countries. So. Is there a difference in hemp grown, let's say, 
in Asia or India and Europe. Is there a difference? No, not necessarily. Hemp as a commercial plant, hemp is hemp as a commercial plant, meaning for, for biofuels, for fiber, hemp is hemp per se. Um, hemp is a, a great bioaccumulator. So um, it accumulates and it soaks up, it sucks up literally um, 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 pesticides, poisons from the ground and such. So it's actually a good plan to clean your ground, it cleans, so to it speak, cleans, right? Yes. Now, on a, on a medicinal base, we don't want to use um, pesticides, heavy metals and such, whatever the plant um, um, accumulates in, in its system. So that's where, that's where the cannabis industry then, years ago, redeveloped um, hemp plants that are high in CBD and, and low in THC because over the last, so that the, I would say, 40 years. So the, the industrial hemp is different from the, the hemp yes. plant that this comes from. Yes, it is hemp. It it's, is commercial it's hemp. It's still hemp, but it it's, still it's hemp. A, different, a different product. It has been bred. This hemp, this hemp strain has been bred. bred back to its original cause and its original purpose, which is high in CBD and very low in THC. Every hemp plant has micro amounts of THC. This is just the nature of the plant right there. Nevertheless, our, our most state laws in America um, prescribe less than three milligrams per gram of THC. Mm -hmm. With our products, we are right under, under that mark at about 2.5 or 2.8 milligrams per gram. So, meaning this hemp strain has been developed in Colorado specifically to be um, the agent to derive your oils from. Mm -hmm. This is, and the, the print is so small, <laughs> heavy metals and pesticide free. Yes, we have, we have. So yeah. this is, it says here, CBD oil, 900 milligrams. Yes, that means in this, in this half ounce bottle, you have 900 milligrams of CBD, of the active ingredient. Uh -huh. um, in, in our laboratory um, reports, you will be able to, for example, see that this particular strain of, of hemp has a, has right here you can see 69 69.7 milligrams of CBD per gram of oil so that means that means almost three quarters of this is actually CBD uh-huh and then that the, is quite a bit so the other ingredients s makes it palatable or there are no other ingredients. This is the pure hemp this oil. Is pure, this is, the this pure, is pure, pure oil. This There's is nothing pure else oil. in there. Nothing else in there. Okay. As is where it is pure oil. Pure oil. We are we we have we have um, CBDs. We have CBDAs, THC, and THCA. Um, THC is THC the cannabis. is a psychoactive That's the ingredient. That's what gets us high. Okay. And CBD in itself um, raises the anxiety level for a lot of people. So in order to, to utilize the CBD oil the way we do it, um, we want to have very, very little THC in it to, again, not raise anxiety or such with people that depend on the CBD to calm them down and have them carry out a normal day. So let's talk. You mentioned that you'd had cancer and all these accidents and then you had cannabis to get you through that <laughs> yes there was a point in my life um, um, about four years ago where where I simply couldn't have any more surgeries in my shoulders or in my knees um, due to motorcycle accidents and more um, I've been a very active person and I was I was um, remembering that uh, that the Mexicans, um, that Mexican people to this day take raw marijuana leaves, cannabis leaves, hemp leaves, and and uh, make 
make them um, uh, unpack their injured areas in their body and have that that CBD um, work on their injuries. So they take the leaf. The they whole take leaf. the leaves. This is not very effective, but it does do some job. It does the job somewhat. So so I started I started um, using medicinal um, cannabis in California. Um, where I was active for four years in the medical marijuana industry um, and uh, teamed up with a person that I met accidentally that worked for a large corporation designing um, tinctures and ointments. And um, that lady basically um, got me into this way of using hemp, cannabis, marijuana to heal of course. So I started developing with her my ointments and now and I use my ointments religiously, meaning meaning I am not on any prescription drug. I don't do that. I'm doing my oils and my creams. I have been able to avoid two shoulder, sh shoulder surgeries now for the, after the last three years. Um, that's what got me into all that. Mm. So you worked in the industry in California? In the industry in, the, in California, um, I, I teamed up with uh, several dispensaries. I designed um, um, growing facilities for the medical marijuana industry. Um, I, I was a consultant for, for care growers. In my age now, I'm very happy that I have accumulated such great amount of knowledge so that I can actually pass on to the younger generations that, that is very active in this medical okay. field. Now, in Hawaii, if you have a cannabis card, medical cannabis card, you can grow 10 plants. You can grow 10 plants, correct. Well, okay, so if I get a card and they say, oh, you can grow 10 plants, a, where do, they, where do I get the plants or seeds? How do I know how to plant them? Where do I plant them? All of, and it, it seems ludicrous that they just throw you out and say, okay, go. It absolutely is. It absolutely is. And this is, uh, this is what I do as a consultant and as a teacher. Um, I educate people on how to do that. Our current, our current laws here in Hawaii are just not sufficient enough. I mean, people like the Hawaii Dispensary Alliance, they do a great job um, in our state to, to propel us forward. Nevertheless, if you look at the straight and, and at the straight numbers, with 10 plants that you can grow yourself, you're really not getting anywhere. Okay, I'll tell you what. We're going to break. Mm -hmm. And when we come back, I want you to tell me, we're going to ask uh, Tom to tell us about growing plants. For those people like me who, my yard, well, never mind. So we, <laughs> when we come back, we, we're going to talk to Tom Piper about what it means to grow 10 plants. Let's do that. Thank, Thank you. you very much. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Sounds like scuba divers are the poor man's astronaut. At Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search DiveHeart.org and imagine the possibilities in your life. We're back, and we are talking to my new best friend, Thomas J. Piper, who is an expert in medical cannabis and hemp. And so there's, I have so many questions. In our state, there's what now, as of today, 
two dispensaries on Oahu. A million people. 20,000 people have a cannabis cart. And then they tell you you can grow 10 plants. Correct. Okay, now I don't have a card, but if I had a card, I could get 10 plants. Where do I buy the plants? Where do I get seeds? How do I plant it? How do I care for it? And then above all, how do you harvest it so that it is consumable? That to me, it seems like 100 miles from here. It's a thousand miles from okay, here. Okay, a thousand miles. All right, a thousand miles. All right. And so, so go ahead. Tell so me. basically, there are two ways to grow a plant. Let we talk about cannabis, hemp, marijuana. You grow from seed, or you take a clone. You have a cutting. This is normal procedure. Where, where do you get that? That is the point. That is the point right now. And I don't know where to start right now. Let me try to get this together. Ten plants. Yes. If you, have, if you grow ten plants and you want to do this on a continuous base, right. you always have to have some plants that are just growing up, your seedlings. Uh -huh. So a lot of young plants die because you neglect them or the cat gets in there or <laughs> something like that. Okay. So ten plants, meaning you have five plants growing, Right. that you will harvest eventually. You have five plants as seedlings growing. That's 10 plants right there. So you still don't have you don't a have mother plant. You still don't have the seeds that can be, that can be legally shipped within the U.S. because the federal government doesn't allow that. And here's again where the dog bites its own tail. Where do we start? How we do that? Yes. The, the medical marijuana industry, let's say California per se, a common, common way to do it is you have a mother plant in your possession. That mother plant is your proud, your pride possession. Um, you take cuttings, clones from this mother plant, mother plant, you root those clones, and then you plant them, and that is your next, your next plant right there. So, math again. One mother plant. Four clones is five, right? And these four clones turn into four adult plants. So now you have nine plants, and not ten. You're missing out on one. How are you going to do that? So, seeds cannot be legally shipped. Right. Federal government doesn't allow that, which leaves us to this day at the illegal level of trying to get seeds or plant material clones from existing people here somewhere that... Someone that ha already has a plant. Someone that already has a plant. Okay, now there's care growers. We can say, we, in, okay. in Hawaii now we can, have, we, we can have care growers. I believe it is three licenses per one person right now. Um, what do you so do? So that's with, a, a co-op uh, co or something? It's kind of a co-op. If, yeah. if you live in an apartment in Makiki and you can have yeah. your plants, you have somebody out in the country that, that is your care grower. Ah, okay. That can be done. In, the, in California, um, when uh, this year just the marijuana, uh, cannabis marijuana turned legal, the, the great concern was that marijuana will be flooding the state <laughs> and everybody is going to oh. be high and everybody is going to be stoned and nobody can drive and on and on and on. What actually happened is that the industry itself raised its level up again because all of a sudden now, the person that cannot grow, the person that does not know how to grow, that has no green thumb at all, right. can actually go to somebody that knows what they're doing and get their cannabis oh. from them. So that means the mediocre growers, the people that use a lot of pesticides, the, the, the growers that don't know how to do it properly, actually are being phased out by the higher quality available freely on the market. Mm -hmm. Now, if we, if we have conditions, if we have people with conditions that, that, ca that ask for more THC for whatever reason, of course you still would have to have the medical card and you would get it from a dispensary. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, here in Hawaii right now, um, we are not quite there yet as far as I know with, uh, with laboratories and such to okay. have extracts or oils yes. available. Well, since 2000, it's been... Well, legal, and yet 
here we are with 2017, and we're still in the dark ages. We still haven't progressed. Correct. So you got the state is making money because you got to pay for this card. And so they don't care that you, all Correct. you want to do is take Correct. money and... That seems to be the, never, uh, that seems to be the bottom line still. Money is money. And yeah. if I get to, if I look at dispensaries in general, um, every dispensary in, let's say, California again, um, they have their own strains, they have their own product, they have their own well, way sense. of choosing and growing. And you really can venture out and try to look for the best product for you, for your for, needs. That satisfies your needs, yes. Correct. Mm -hmm. Now, now we are not there yet here in Hawaii. No. I, That's what I'm, I'm, I'm spellbound by not, all of this. Not only this, but I firmly believe at this point in life, with my amount of knowledge, the amount of strains, hemp, cannabis I've seen in the different countries, in the world and in my last four years, especially Colorado, Washington, and being involved in the California medical marijuana industry, um, we do not have a superior product yet here in Hawaii. It is a sad story. So that means that how do you, we, how do you do how do you get to be in a superior strain? You need to get a superior strain of your product. Right, but how do we that, how do we get there from here? You have, to, you have to find the right seeds or you have to be able to get the right clones or mother plant to Hawaii. We are not... How do we do that? As long as Uncle Sam says, no, 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 we will not be able to do that. That is the problem we have in, right now in this state, that, that our first dispensary that opened up had only one particular strain available um, for a fairly high price, I must say, and I wouldn't necessarily call it a superior product. Well, I know that there's another one opening. Yes, just open, and I hope that that so, folks would get. But I don't on. know the the difference. For for the pure use of CBD, let's, let's forget go back about to, let's go back. back let's to forget to about the THC now. That is the medical side, and, right? And these folks have so to this battle is out the, on their own. Yeah. Okay. So now, this is the CBD oil. This now finally. Now let's, let's talk about this. Finally, we are actually at a point where we don't necessarily always need medical marijuana, medical cannabis, because now we have this hybrid strain of hemp that has been developed in Colorado um, to, to provide these incredible number of almost 70% of CBD and a very little THC under the, under the legal law. So for people, people now are, can readily buy CBD oil from my company, from other companies, without worrying about a medical marijuana card. Now, I would like to point so out... So you don't need a card to buy this? You don't need a card at all, oh, no. Okay. Um, I would like to point out most, of, most important, not, uh, not hemp is not just hemp. You have to be aware of, um, I would say, products that were imported. CBD oil from, for example, the Ukraine. The Ukraine is a large, com large country that produces incredible amounts of, of, of hemp. Um, Spain is another country. And we don't necessarily have insight as to growing conditions, right. processing, and such. And, yeah, and oh, synthetics. How do you tell? How do you tell? So you, you find some of these, some of the, so my first question always would be, where does it come from? What's actually in there? What's and, in there? And yes. with our with our laboratory uh, testing and report, every batch is being tested. Not every batch is the same. Our CBD content is a, a few percent lower, sometimes a few a little bit higher. It depends on the growing conditions, of right. course, as well, right? So that's the first question I always would ask. And and most people are after the effects of the CBD for anxiety, um, to get through the day. Um, CBD activates um, our cannabinoid receptors in our brains and our bodies. So there is the moment so, we so take So we that, have cannabinoids already yes, in the body. We so we, we're going to enhance it with correct enhance and stimulate. Ah. So that our body your body does communicates work. within itself. Yep. 
and that's all it is. And Once so the, then the body takes care of itself, its own immune system. In a way, yes. yes. Um, there is no medicinal claims at this point. If it's not FDA approved, we know well, that. Well, for our audience, let me say, aspirin is not FDA approved, and it's sold around the world. I didn't know that. Yes. Excellent. However, oxycodone is FDA approved. So we don't, we don't worry about them. That's out of the question. Good. And in fact, what one person told me that swears by this, they said this is the best way to get off of the opiate addiction. I am, I am actually, um, uh, I'm helping several people on this island alone um, with, with the, the ability to get over um, the opiate addiction. The opiate okay. addiction. This is a big, big thing in our country right now. It's out of proportions. And um, just yesterday, um, I talked to a lady on the North Shore, for example, and she's given her dog three drugs, three drops in the morning, and and the dog, the old dog, is doing fine, and then then not falling over, and a happy camper. Um, 80 years of prohibition in general has not allowed for much research. We really don't know exactly what it all does. And, and I'm using the straight oil, for example, for some skin conditions. It does help. People have to find out for themselves what it and how it helps. The, I recommend talk to people that have experience with this, find out what their level is of well-being before and after, mm -hmm. find out how they react. I have usually, um, usually I spend between 30 minutes and an hour with every single person that would like to get uh, my products to try to guide them through because people do not know how, how much, much, when, but, and so on and so forth. Okay, so we are just about out of time. You see people. Uh, would you give us your telephone number yes. so they can call you? You can call me anytime. My telephone number is 436-5225. My website is fishingmoon.net. Um, I, I would love to pass on information and knowledge so that these people that have our products get the utmost out of it. Well, thank you. Will you come back and visit us again? Marta Jones, thank you very much. Thank, thank you for you. having me on the show. I appreciate it. It's a real pleasure, right. and I've learned so much. And we will see you again okay. next week. Thank you very much. Aloha. Aloha.